Seven years ago, if you told me I was going to be installing an electric power steering system from a Toyota Prius on this freaking monster, I would have called you crazy. That being said, welcome to our part two of installing a Prius column on our 97 GSX. Let's get right into it. All right, you guys, if you haven't watched part one, go watch it because it's gonna show exactly how we tore down this 2G column. Now we're gonna focus on one part of the steering system. So this is the lower section of our 2G column. You can see the bracket here where it actually bolts to underneath the dash. Pretty much what we need from this is this bracket assembly. So we're gonna be cutting this section out in order to actually reuse this bracket on our factory Prius column. That way all the brackets are more or less the same and it pretty much bolts right up. Now, don't throw away this, don't mess this up because this shaft is we're gonna use next. Unfortunately, we can't cut that in my 20 year old chop saw. Now that you guys have the factory 2G lower column, you can kind of use your imagination on how we're pretty much going to bolt this up to our hybrid column. Now obviously we're not there yet, so don't worry about this right now. We're going to be focusing on this guy next. What's interesting about this build we are, we're doing guys, is we're f using the factory upper column so we can retain all of the accessories like the turn signal switch, the wiper switch, obviously the anti-lag, you know, even the factory steering wheel. So if you guys can imagine, this is what we're looking at. now. You guys can see there's a lot of gapage right there. And honestly, I'm not really happy with that. We don't like that. So how we're gonna fix it is first we're gonna take our lower 2G column that we cut off. I told you guys to save this. We're gonna take off about five inches of this and this is gonna act as like a spacer sleeve. Now that we chopped off this little sleeve, you guys are gonna think this is crazy, but a lot of these parts from the 2G column to the Prius lower column, it's actually like almost a pretty close fit. We also took this off of our lower column. Hopefully you guys didn't throw it away. Now, as you guys can imagine, this is gonna act like a giant sleeve over the lower Prius column and it fits nice and snug. Now, just so you guys know, it's gonna be super difficult to get this in here. And once you have it perfectly flush, just know that once it's in here it's not coming out so go ahead and get either a rubber mallet or a piece of wood and start tapping this in where it's perfectly flush Now the whole point of that was to make the inside diameter of this a lot smaller. That way when we slide it over the Toyota Prius column, there's no slop. Remember before how there was a ton of slop? Now there's very, very minimal. What that's gonna do is allow it to sit a lot more straight. It's not gonna be as sloppy and it won't put as much wear and tear on this outer bearing here. So now we're gonna to get to the fun part. I went ahead and temporarily mounted up the 2G bracket to our Prius column. You guys can see I kind of mounted it perfectly parallel, perfectly straight with the two bolt holes here, here, and where it lines up perfectly with the shaft. More or less, this is the exact spot how you're gonna weld this up. The problem with this is, however you guys mount this bracket is how it's gonna orientate where this motor goes. And I'll show you in the car where this hits. So if we go underneath the dash, you're gonna see something missing. So this is the plastic piece of the plenum that sits down here. Unfortunately, we are gonna to have to cut this off right flush with that. Obviously, the motor is so big, it actually hits right here. This isn't 100% perfect fit, because there's not a lot of room down here, but obviously, we're gonna do what we can. If you guys don't have AC and don't have the plenum, you guys can actually mount that bracket a little bit more oriented, which is gonna face it way up in here. But for me, I'm gonna mount it here, and I'm gonna be perfectly fine with that. 
Now, however you guys mount up that bracket, that's what's gonna determine where this motor is gonna sit. Obviously, you wanna make sure that you're not hitting any cables. You make sure that the gas pedal linkage has all the play that it needs. Now, as far as the brackets, they're gonna be 100% custom. We are gonna have to build a bracket that goes from here to here and weld that into place so we can go ahead and put a hole so we can bolt something to that. Also down here, we're gonna wanna give it support as well. For example, this threaded bolt hole here, we're gonna have a bracket coming down here and here. And honestly, you guys, I'm gonna use angle iron because not only we're gonna cut and use it to make our brackets, we're also gonna use it for support whenever we weld our steering shafts, just to kind of give it that extra support. Now I'm using a one inch by one eighth by 48 inches. Honestly, you don't need one this long, but that's all they have. So don't laugh, I'm not a welder, I'm a grinder. But as you guys can see, I kind of made a lower bracket. This is kind of what you're going for. You're wanting just to make a giant U-shaped. Make sure that it covers over this bolt hole because that's where we're gonna drill our hole so we can mount it. Next up, I'm gonna start welding this lower bracket to the actual bracket and then start welding in this bottom piece. Trust me, I am not the best welder, you guys, but I mean, I know how to lay down somewhat kind of beads, but even though the beads may look like throw up, I've been welding for about maybe 10, 15 years unprofessionally, but I haven't held a weld break yet. Knock on some wood, where's some wood? There's some wood, there you go. So after you guys lay down some beautiful welds, line it up, that one looks like a hippo. But just remember, dead center is where we wanted the two bolt holes. So after we kind of have it exactly where it was, next we're gonna go ahead and mark the bolt holes exactly where they align, which is pretty much there and there. So I have it mocked up in the car. Honestly, this is gonna be the first time you guys actually see what it looks like. But you guys can see what I was talking about, how it totally hits that little HVAC bracket right there. And obviously we kept the tilt function so we can go up as high as we can. Next, we're gonna test fit the upper portion of the, of the 2G column and make sure it fits. We got the upper column installed and honestly you guys, it fits pretty good, almost like a glove. Thank God I have small feet because this might be an issue for the guys that are bigger than size nine. Now that we got everything to more or less fit, it's actually welding these two shafts together. However, the question is where on earth do we cut this? I'm gonna go over next on how we're supposed to measure it, cut it, weld it, and it's gonna be the perfect length. So first up on the Prius column, you're gonna get the shaft that came out of it very gently you're going to slide it outwards now it's going to get to a stopping point where it just stops and it doesn't want to come out so this is going to be our rest position next up without pushing the shaft in you're going to take the 2g column and you're going to slide it in and be careful not to push that shaft back in if you do it's going to mess up your marks from bolt hole to bolt hole in the chassis under the dash it is exactly nine inches i have already measured it so what you're going to do is get up the tape measure measure from the center to center eyelid to be nine inches so right now we're exactly nine inches if you guys wanted to make a mark on this you're going to see we have about roughly a quarter inch gap that's exactly what we want. Remember that washer and that spacer that you took out in the beginning? Make sure obviously don't lose that stuff. So next what you're gonna do is pretty much put the washer and the spacer right where the race is. Next up, you're gonna get a screwdriver or a flathead and you're gonna put it close where you're barely touching the tip. Now wherever that is, you're gonna mark it. That's gonna be measurement one. So when you look at your mark, you're gonna see that you made a mark here. Go ahead and measure that with your tape measure and this came out to one inch and one quarter. So one and one quarter is gonna be our measurement for step one. Now that's a very important number because we're gonna transfer that one and one quarter onto our shafts. Now remember it was one inch and one quarter away from this snap ring and where the screwdriver touched the shaft. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it back 
one inch and one quarter. So you can see that on the snap ring, I have an inch and a quarter away from the tip of the Prius shaft. Now, wherever you guys look at this, you're gonna pretty much cut a straight line and that's where we're gonna bolt this shaft to the lower portion of this shaft. For an example, I'm gonna make a mark right where it got turned down. This mark is where I'm gonna cut this shaft and I'm gonna cut this shaft and I'm gonna join them together. Honestly, if you guys kinda lost me a little bit, just know from this edge to this edge, you want 14 inches. Now wherever this ends up being is where you're pretty much gonna cut a straight line. So now that we have our two shafts cut up exactly the length that we need to, now we're gonna to go to the process of welding it. Now this is where I have to put a disclaimer guys. Just so you know, if your welding skills are not good or if you're not sure this is gonna hold and this weld breaks, you will 100% lose your steering. I can't stress it enough. If you guys are not comfortable with your welds and you know they're not gonna penetrate weld enough or if your welder's not strong enough, please take it to somebody that can because this is probably the most important part of this steering shaft that they have to be welded together. After we weld this, we are gonna put some support braces here. That way we make sure this is 100% strong and it's not gonna break on us. So this is the setup. I have it mounted on the angle iron. I have two vice grips holding both pieces in place. Honestly, everything looks pretty straight, pretty aligned, and I'm pretty happy with the gap that I have right there. It's getting a little dark out here, and <laughs> we've got to clean up all this mess. Now, you only got one and a half inches of play between this and the other edge because we have one and a half inches inside here. So obviously, you can't make the welds too thick. Don't make them look like a hippo because they're not going to fit inside here. So I'm not gonna lie guys, you know, the stock weight of this Tucci column versus this one, oh man, this one is way heavier because of this motor. Now, in our next video, in part three, we're gonna be installing the column, and then once we install it, then we can go ahead and measure the bottom slip yoke, get that cut, welded, 100% install the system, test the wiring, and that's it guys. So if you guys like what you're seeing so far, I hope I'm being descriptive as possible and I hope you guys can follow along. I know this is kind of a big, long build, but honestly, a Toyota Prius steering column on a 2G DSM, I mean, I only know a handful of guys that's done this and there's nobody online that shows you how. So if you guys like the video, go ahead and like that button. And don't forget to subscribe because we're gonna be putting out part three next week on the full install and we're gonna be fully testing it, probably even doing a test drive and uh, hopefully it just doesn't have a mind of its own and you know turn me into a wall hmm it shouldn't honestly it shouldn't I know there was a recall on some Priuses back a long time ago and uh, it may have been for steering Duh, I don't know we'll see anyways best of luck to you guys I'll catch you on the next video bye